The FOC standard Tejas SP-34 has conducted its first flight, that will soon be delivered to the Indian Air Force, and now only the two FOC Tejas aircraft are left to conclude its first flight, that will also be completed in the coming weeks. Hindustan Aeronautics has delivered Tejas SP-27 to SP-35 within 4.5 months period, that also indicates that HAL is fully capable of producing 24 fighters per year. HAL will also start deliveries of 8 Tejas Mark I trainers by mid of this year, that will be followed by the production of 10 FOC trainer units that were ordered along with the 73 Tejas Mark I-A contract. The first testbed for Tejas Mark I-A program will also conduct its first flight in June, that will be followed by another testbed in later half of this year. According to the official press release, the DRDO carried out two successful flight tests of the Army variant of MR SAM missile yesterday. The first launch was to intercept a medium altitude long range high speed aerial target, and the second launch was against a low altitude short range target, and the MR SAM missile intercepted both the aerial targets, and registered direct hits at both their ranges, and destroyed them completely. We had reported yesterday, that the fourth test of the hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle will use a K-4 missile booster rocket, on which experts have said, that using the K-4 as a booster will increase its range by at least five times, as the K-4 carries more fuel than the Agni-1 booster, and now the heat shield separation will happen at much higher altitudes at 100 km, as compared to 30 km altitude of previous three tests. The DRDO has already achieved max 6 speed in the last test, and is developing hypersonic glide vehicles, that are usually injected at a height of 100 km altitude, after which it re-enters the atmosphere and glides itself to the target as far as 8000 km. All these developments indicate that India will have a production-ready hypersonic cruise missile and hypersonic glide vehicle by 2025. Tatu has delivered the first three units of the total six-wheeled armoured platform that were ordered by the Indian paramilitary forces, that will start user trials in the next few days, and after its successful completion, Tatu will start getting major orders. The delivered units have received some design changes, that includes a raised armoured driver station for better visibility, a remote controlled weapon station, and increased number of firing ports. The WAP has also completed all internal user trials of the Indian Army, and Tatu is in discussions to close a mega deal with the Indian Army for more than 200 units. Ordnance Factory Dum Dum, which is a unit of Yantra India Limited, has dispatched first consignment of depth charge Mark II Mod 3 empty and inert versions for the Indian Navy. A depth charge is an anti-submarine warfare weapon, that is dropped into the water near a submarine to destroy it. The Chief of French Navy Admiral Pierre Vandier has arrived on a three-day visit to India, with an aim to further boost bilateral maritime cooperation. This visit comes at a time when the French Navy had sent its Rafale Marine Carrier Bone aircraft for trials by the Indian Navy, and India is looking at France as a trusted partner for six nuclear attack submarines. The Indian Foreign Minister has formally handed over the coastal radar system to the Chief of Maldives Defence Force. The coastal radar system is already operational, and comprises 10 radar stations, that will contribute to enhancing maritime security for the Maldives and for the entire region. The radar systems have already been installed in Sri Lanka, Mauritius and Seychelles, while Bangladesh is at an advanced stage, and 12 other countries are perceived for a similar requirement. <laughs> Oh, Mark, drop it.